teachers have a set of guidelines. You know, if you're, if you're an earth science teacher in the 10th grade in any school in Minnesota, there is a list of things that you are expected to teach the students over the course of the school year. These, we kind of like this one because Wisconsin is a neighbor state. We're kind of a rival with those guys, so they're, they're crappier than we are. Hooray. <laughs> okay, we're also surrounded by North Dakota, which is even worse. Anyway, so there's, but, but you know, Minnesota doesn't have that much to brag about. We are only satisfactory or good, and there's only a few states that have actually produced decent documents that say something substantial about evolution and expect the students to learn something really meaty and important about this central biological concept in the classroom. What's the white state? The white state is Iowa, and it just means they don't have a state standard. They didn't do anything there. Okay. A bunch of farmers down there. Yeah, we don't, we don't. We laugh about them, too. Okay. So, there's a few states that, that have very good science standards. So, like California, some of the northeastern states. Uh, this one I like to point out because there, there's, a, there's a pervasive attitude in the United States that if you're from the south, you're a hick and you're ignorant and you're a redneck who doesn't know anything. And it's not true. There are good, smart, intelligent people in all of these states. Uh, and sometimes they can win out and they can do a good job. And so in the Carolinas, they actually have some pretty good state science standards. So it's a mishmash. Yes? Yes, it definitely does. <laughs> that, uh, that generally when these state science standards are written, what they do is they put out a call to all over the state and they ask for educators, they ask for scientists, uh, they ask for ordinary citizens to contribute and they form a committee. And so having a powerful research institution in your state is a good source of good information about science and it gets translated into the, the state science standards. We just explained Wisconsin, for instance, which is Madison, but it, you will often find that states may manipulate the committees. Minnesota went through this a few years ago where we actually had a creationist who was in charge of our state's uh, state education board, and she actually packed the committee with creationists, which sometimes happens. And it's happening in, in Texas right now. Yes? That's another good question. Um, they, they, are often, they often slip quite a bit from what's actually happening in the classroom. That, that was what, this, what Randy Moore was discovering, is that they weren't teaching everything there. However, the thing is, oh, the question is, is how closely do state sta science standards actually reflect what is actually taught in the classroom? And the answer is that sometimes they don't. However, if you've got a teacher who does not meet the state science standards, it means the parents in that area have some leverage. You can go to the school and you can say, well, look, here's this list of things that my student was supposed to be, my, my child was supposed to be taught and was not. What's wrong with your teacher? And that actually has some force. It's, it's a very useful thing uh, for activists in, in education to have on hand. Okay. So this is a problem, that there are many states where we're just ignoring it. And even the ones where it says, it says it's satisfactory, you'll notice uh, it says, like in Texas, human evolution is not covered. Yes? Has any teacher teaching evolution been fired for what he has done? Has any teacher been taught for teaching evolution? Um, has been fired? Been, been fired for teaching evolution. Uh, not as far as I know. I've, I've talked to a few teachers who have received pressure, informal pressure, uh, not official pressure, to avoid teaching it. So it hasn't gotten quite that bad yet. Although we can also point to a few officials, especially in, in Texas, who have been fired for advocating evolution. Is it, yes? This is the public school system. Yes. What percentage of kids at <laughs> school and home school uh, that, that, that's another quite good question. I do not have that data on my fingertips. Um, the public school system is the dominant one. It is by far the majority, I suspect, like 90%. However, homeschooling is growing incredibly fast. And it, that, that's another terrifying thing. Uh, there are good homeschoolers, but of course many of the homeschoolers are doing it for ideological reasons where they do not teach anything close to science at all. Um, 
there, there's still a small percentage, but uh, numbers I, I recall hearing something like a few hundred thousand students are homeschooled in the United States right now. Okay, yes? Do you have any information on Canada? <laughs> <laughs> Why, no. Yes, I understand there are Canadians in the audience. <laughs> okay, well, barring ignorance about your, since you've got ignorance about your own country, we'll, we'll move on and continue to talk about the United States. <laughs> okay, here's, here's another problem. Uh, this is another survey that was done where they asked uh, people to pick between these three alternatives. So there's the right answer. At least I would say so. Uh, human beings have evolved over millions of years, but God had no part in it. Uh, this is sort of the theistic evolutionary explanation, which is, says that evolution is true, but God was in there tinkering. Uh, and then finally, the batshit insane creationist position, <laughs> which is that the Earth is less than 10,000 years ago and old, and God poofed them all into existence. And as you can see, if you look at the general population, that's blue, uh, about half are in this category, okay? And then it drops off up here. About 13% of the American population is correct. The red bars are public high school teachers, high school biology teachers. Now look at that, that's, that's the one that terrifies me. 16% of high school biology teachers in the United States are creationists, flat out young earth creationists. Now I mentioned before, you know, the NCSE and those other organizations are great, they're standing guard at the door, but somehow they're sneaking through, aren't they? That what are you going to do if you've got a creationist teacher who's in there refusing on ideological grounds to teach evolution decently or teaching misconceptions of evolution or smuggling in all kinds of crazy ideas about Earth, the Earth being 10,000 years old. This is a tough one, and this is a growing number. This is getting worse all the time. This one, uh, that's not so good either as far as I'm concerned because I'm, I'm one of those militant atheists, but I'll live with that. I mean, at least most of these teachers, I kind of suspect, are not trying to smuggle religion into the classroom. They've got her private religious beliefs, and that's okay. I'm not gonna, we, we do not want to persecute, persecute people for having their own private religious beliefs. But anyway, okay, so this is a problem. Classrooms being invaded no matter what we do. Another thing I worry about, uh, this has been in the news more and more often, is creationists flatly, blatantly sneaking their way into graduate programs and uh, getting degrees. Degrees in what? Ah, well, here's a couple examples. This is, this is Marcus Ross, who uh, recently made the news because he got his PhD from the University of Rhode Island uh, Marcus Ross got his degree in paleontology, studying mosasaurs, the distribution of mosasaurs in uh, late Cretaceous somewhere. Okay, so he's doing geology, paleontology, putting these creatures. At the same time, Marcus Ross is a young earth creationist who was going around the country giving lectures at creationist conferences, advocating things like intelligent design. He was a collaborator with a, another well-known creationist named Paul Nelson on a particularly awful paper that was given in a developmental biology conference I went to. Uh, so they're, they're doing this kind of thing where they're saying one thing in front of their review committees, in front of their graduate programs, and saying something completely different when they get outside and go off and work somewhere. So Marcus Ross got his degree from the University of Rhode Island to much fanfare in the news and in things like the blogs. Uh, we, can, we can count ourselves lucky he has now got a job at Liberty University, which is Jerry Falwell's place, which is a nice place to send these people where they can't do too much harm. Because that's, that, you know, that, they're, they're, their student body is hopeless. Anyway, so that's where he is right now. Uh, Nathaniel Abraham is another case came up recently. Uh, Nathaniel Abraham got his, his degree and then went looking for work, and he actually applied to get uh, to work in a zebrafish lab at Cold Spring Harbor. And this was a zebrafish lab that was looking at questions of the evolution of teleosts. 
And after he got into the lab and was working there for a few weeks, you know, they, they were 